theatre, performance and spoken word or creative writing allow people to have a voice and improve self-confidence. From schools to community organisations, the art of storytelling is happening dynamically all over the borough. We got the opportunity to train with some of the Royal Shakespeare Company staff that actually work on the production of Matilda up and down the country. The children all got the opportunity to go and watch Matilda being uh, produced actually on the stage which was amazing because some of our children have never been to a theatre before so that was an amazing opportunity for them to be able to do um, and then the training that we got enabled us to put our production on ourselves. Nervous adrenaline rushing through me I just it was an, I just loved it. Children that are looked after are from families that have been split and that their children have been removed due to safeguarding issues mainly um, and they are now in the care of the local authority um, or with foster parents or in some cases with adoptive long-term parents. Um, we wanted to help support these children with activities that they could do for their well-being uh, and also give them opportunities to develop their skill set as well but also be able to do that in an environment that was supportive of their needs. Well, because at school we did Matilda the Musical, I, it just got me into drama loads and it like boosted my confidence. So then um, I just came here and I love like dancing like every night when I go home after school, I'm like always singing to myself in my bedroom. It's just really fun like being with new people that I haven't seen before and then like making new friends with them, it's fun. <laughs> I think access to the arts is absolutely critical. Um, my own background is in the arts and I know how much I got in my own self-confidence from being part of the arts and I would want that for every single child in my school. Um, there's such a big emphasis on reading, writing and maths in a lot of primary schools at the moment as well as the national curriculum but I think the arts are critical. It's an opportunity for children to show um, emotion through what they do and I think that is it exceptionally important for pupil wellbeing to give them the opportunity where they can show how they're feeling through either acting or singing um, or even dancing. Um, that it's, it's an absolute must in every single primary school as far as I'm concerned. We're a community organisation. We mainly work with adults with learning disabilities and we use um, all forms of creative performing arts and accessible sports um, as our vehicle to support people and for them to achieve their aspirations. We're going out and educating the young, educating the young people, all the, the children and young people in Wigan about uh, people, with, people with disabilities, say, saying how um, our lives have really come on in the past uh, decade or so. So, um, because everything used to be so different, but it's like lives, are lives are changed now for the better and we really want to show that to people. It is all about um, gaining confidence to, and, and practising for, for real life um, and theatre is one of the oldest forms of um, healing for for people, so um, it it works. You know, I've I've had students that I've worked with that wouldn't actually even communicate and speak unless they were on the stage, and suddenly turned into this other character that then slowly changed. You know, the way the way they interacted with other people and and what other stuff they could achieve. So. Yeah, it's, it can be quite magical, really. I think creativity is important just because of all the performances that we've done, we've got a big library of. And I think it's because it makes people un understand their needs and disabilities in a, a creative way, like everyone's in in included. And all the things that we do involves everyone. You get that self-worth of performing in front of somebody because you've gave something to somebody who's come to watch it and there's so much to be gained from that, even from someone who might not be verbal. So it's, it's, I think it's the best way to learn and it's the best way to 
grow. Good way. Wigan Little Theatre's membership has ages ranging across the life course. In 2019, they were honoured for 70 years voluntary service with the Queen's Award and received visits from His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and Sir Ian McKellen. The recognition we get would obviously be nothing without the people that work there and volunteering is a big part of my life now at Wigan Little Theatre and I've met so many people through it. I think it's something that we should all look at doing and definitely uh, it makes Wigan Little Theatre better. The more volunteers we have, the more experience we get and that's again what we're trying to instill with the youth theatre, that volunteering is important and it's not just about performing on stage but it's about being part of something bigger than yourself. So. My confidence has improved much better since I've been part of the youth theatre group. For me, it gives me something to do. I'm not stuck in my room. And also it's like a, like a chance to be someone else. You know, it's, it's a very good break from reality. And you, I've met a whole load of new friends through acting and with little theatre and the youth theatre. And um, it's the best thing that ever, that's ever happened to me. The Tuesday Matinee Club meets every second Tuesday of the month. And it's open to everyone where people can meet and bring poetry, prose, um, personal anecdotes. Stolen Thread Productions work in partnership with a Will and Away Acting School, putting on professional productions using professional actors, students from the school and members of the community wherever possible. One of our productions this year was Wind in the Willows at Pennington Flash Country Park. This was a fabulous venue for families and people of all ages to I get a bit of exercise, following the theatre around, listening to the story and enjoying the fresh air at the same time. Okay, so thanks to the focus this year on cultural education and funding from the council, um, Stolen Thread have been able to put on some acting classes for people with autism. So some of the carers have noticed that um, attention spans have improved, um, people are less anxious when sitting in groups, um, a particular young lady who is non-verbal was able to spend longer times with us in the session and joining in in her own way and enjoying herself. Well, I used to live in supported accommodation and then I've gone from that to living in my own flat and the, doing that, I'm working here, well, volunteering at the Old Courts, it's given me that confidence to, to be able to go on to do those things and have a different life completely. Journaling is simple creative writing exercises, but the aim is specifically to improve people's health and wellbeing. And this group that I ran recently was aimed at people with long-term chronic illness. It was a research-based project, so Healthy Arts applied to Cartwheel Arts through the Live Well Make Art project. And the aim was to do some, some workshops to see whether it did actually improve people's health and wellbeing. And this is the direction that Healthy Arts are very keen to go into, which is using the research into arts and, and health and wellbeing to see whether we can document the actual improvements that we can make for people. I'm currently working with a local resident. He's a disabled man who is non-verbal, who communicates using a light reader. And for many years, he's wanted to write his life story. And he's now using his personal budget to pay for me to go and work with him and spend time and, and I'm ghostwriting the book for him. But Healthy Arts are also applying for funding to actually create a book and create a launch event for him so that the book can actually reach a, a, a wider audience both uh, in print and online. We do know in, um, with medical evidence that if you have a hobby, whether it's doing crosswords, whether it's going for a heritage walk, whether it's uh, gardening, whether it's writing poetry, Perceiving that and helping to foster that would help to reduce the progress of dementia and also keep them fully engaged. And also it's nice, it humanizes, uh, rather than become a disease-based model, uh, they still have all their attributes when it comes to those particular areas of art. And it's, it's amazing to see somebody who can't remember their address or phone number come alive when they're reciting a poetry they, they like. And I think that's, that's, that's the most rewarding aspect of this guy. The Dementia Voices Project is an idea that started um, over four years ago in collaboration with the University of Manchester. And we piloted a short performance piece that captured um, what it's like to live and be affected by young onset dementia. 
And then we applied for funding from the Wellcome Trust to develop the project further um, through a public engagement with research grant. And that grant enabled us to visit multiple um, different groups of people living with young onset dementia and their carers and talk to health and social care professionals and really understand what it means to be affected by this. And um, through those workshops, Louise Walwyn, the writer, created the piece Hidden. Hidden tells the story of four people all experiencing young onset dementia. Um, so we have a young man called Daniel and his mother and a couple called Pat and Kay and it's how they chart through this, through the diagnosis, through living their lives and what was really important and what I really heard a lot of was the carers' stories and how difficult it is for them and actually they're doubly hidden by this condition. This sort of work is really important to me personally because drama and art has got such an important role to play in changing the way we think about the world in which we live and particularly about I'm always really interested in the experience of people who don't really have a voice and the sort of um, way that drama can enter and really help people understand difference a bit more. I love your courage. Your courage is one of the things I love about you, Pat. People, the actors and Louisa Arita, and everybody behind the scenes and the musicians, they just smashed it for me. It was just everything. I couldn't turn around and I couldn't say to you, you know, that doesn't relate to me because it all seemed to relate to me.